Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today in this video I am going to be showing you my watercolour palette. This is my main palette that I use for, you know, for all my watercolour pieces. There will be a few exceptions such as my earlier pieces which I use with my student palette which I will showcase in another video. So this is a palette right here. It is metal. This is a generic one, it's not branded. I got this from an art store in The Hague, in the Netherlands. I got that when I was on holiday there. So, let me open this up. Now this is metal because, it's good this is metal, it's because it's um, it's nicer to mix on. It doesn't stain as easily as the plastic one. It can be prone to rust if you get it water in the wrong place, so do be careful. So, as you can see there are nice, there are four large mixing wells at the top here. I use these quite a lot for large washes, like backgrounds, other parts. I have all recently cleaned this palette, but there are still a few stains on here, particularly from blue and purple. I'm not sure you can see that too much. If I open it up down the bottom here, there, there are some smaller palettes down here. I believe there are 10, yes, there are 10 smaller wells down here. I've started using them a lot more frequently for just smaller mixes, like small detail work and smaller paintings. They're really good for not wasting too much paint. Now, this is the full palette. It's a 36 half pan and I believe it holds 18 full pans. Now I've got a mixture of both half and full in here. Now in total, in this palette I have 34 colours, which is quite a lot of colours. You don't need this many, but in my quest to try different brands and experiment with different brands of watercolour, I have ended up with 34 colours. Now there is one pan, there are 35 pans in here though. Uh, one of them is a pan of ox skull, which is from Schmincke. This helps um, with colours flowing. So if you've got a colour that doesn't flow very well and you want to make, to make a nice gradient background, you can add that to it. Or if um, paint's just a little bit old, it needs a bit of help. You don't ever add it to the paint though directly, you always add it in the palette. Okay. So I've organised these in colours, so reds, purples, blues, greens, yellows, and then earth colours down the bottom. And oranges as well, I've added some oranges down the bottom. Now I've got several different brands in this palette. Uh, the ones I have most, I guess, are Old Holland, Schmincke, Rembrandt. They're the main ones, oh, Royal Talons even, because I've got a few palette, few um, half pans down here, Van Gogh, which is their student line. Which is really good because they're quite cheap and they're really good. Like if you feel them, they feel like um, an artist grade paint rather than like the cotton that feels a little bit plastic and a little bit chalky. Now the four pans in here are from White Knights by uh, St. Petersburg White Knights, I believe. So I think they used to be called Yarka paints. So they're from Russia. They're only available in half pans and they are very cheap. Like two pounds a half pan, they're really cheap. I also have a few Windsor and Newton pans in here as well. Not very many of them because I'm not the biggest fan of theirs. Some of theirs are okay, but they're quite pricey for what they are compared to other brands. They do have some nice colours though, and I've got a couple of vintage colours of theirs as well, including like uh, Windsor Emerald and Rose Carfame. And there's one more. Oh yeah, Aurora Yellow, that one there. They are they're um not in circulation anymore. They stopped producing them. You can still find some of it on eBay or through private sellers or in old art shops you might be able to find it. Uh, I think the youngest of these might be Vermilion, I think. I know the Aurora Yellow stopped production about 15 to 20 years ago and the Rose Carfame was stopped production in the 60s. But you can mix both of those colours out of existing Windsor and Newton colour paints along with the Vermilion and the Windsor Emerald. Which are really good. Right, what else can I say about this? Now, this palette did overall cost quite a bit of money for all the paints included, as I added it all separately. Now, the reason I did that, as I said, was because I wanted to experiment with brands. I didn't just want to buy, say, a Schmincke palette or a Old Holland palette of 24. They are about £100, roughly, uh, which is quite good if you don't know where to start, but I wanted to pick my own colours, which ones I liked, which ones I wanted, 
because I found a lot of the pre-made palettes didn't have the colours that I wanted from that certain brand. Like I wanted from, for example, from the old Honda, like the Schleveninger Blue Deep. And what else did I want? I like the Schleveninger Red and like King's Blue. I wanted those colours and they weren't in their standard set of 24 ready-made palettes. So I would have to go and buy those anyway on top. So I didn't really see much point in buying a set palette. That way as well I can mix brands, I could develop my collection as I go along. I didn't buy all these paints all at once. I bought them in several different little hauls. I bought a few with the actual metal palette itself and a few all the others I purchased online from Jackson's Art, with the exception of the these three um, Van Gogh colours which I got from another art store in the Netherlands where I was there as well. I think one or two of these came from eBay as well, like uh, the two old, win like the actually the three old uh, Winter and Newton colours, they all came from eBay. Well, what's really good about doing it is this way you can build up your collection as you go. You don't have to pay out like 50 to 100 pounds for all the pack or the choose a paint or half pounds or whichever you prefer to use. You can just sort of build it up gradually, which is really good. You can start with like 10 colours of each fa colour family and then just go from there which is sort of why I did. I think I ended up with about two, one to two of each colour. Starting mostly with a lot of blues. I didn't have a lot of reds, I still don't. But I recently expanded those along with the greens. These are new greens. Oops, that's still a bit wet. They're new greens. Before I only had that one. I don't really use a lot of greens in my artwork. And I find that one tends to be enough. And I just mix all the other shades up myself. So what else can I really say about this, apart from this is obviously a really good option to do if you're not sure, if you want to explore brands and if you'd like to explore different colours, not maybe the ones that a lot of palettes include. Most palettes do include like Prussian blue, a cadmium yellow, a cadmium red, sap green, earth colours, and then a few other ones like some will include ultramarine uh, or a lemon yellow or a viridium. There are a lot of colours here that don't in, aren't included in standard like 24 sets or 12 sets that you get, such as like the uh, King's Blue Light, which I think is a Cerulean Blue, or Manganese Blue, or, um, or other colours such as like some of the magentas and purples and pinks. You don't usually get find those in ready-made palettes. You have to buy them separately and add them to your palette. So this is really good to do that as well. Now most of these paints are artist grade paints, as I said. There are probably about three or four, actually I've just noticed another one up here that is a student, and that is Van Gogh. Uh, I prefer the Van Gogh to the cotton. It's definitely a better quality of paint. So this is my main palette. I have another one here, it's just my spare ones, or colours I don't like, or ones I don't use very often. There's not many here, many in here, there's just a few from an old palette I recently purchased on eBay. I didn't want to add to this one because I don't really use it very much. And the Schminkers Paint Square, which I dislike. And apart from that, my only other artist grade palette is the Sennelier 8 one, which I would like to keep separate as I don't have yet to work a lot with these colours. So we'll see how that one goes. I think I have the colour chart of most of these somewhere. If I can find it. Yes, here we go. Here's the colour chart of this palette. I'll just move out this if I can flatten it. There's quite a lot of colours. So that one. That's the colours of all of them. I've done I I've, I've done a different layout here because this is how I originally had my palette before I cleaned and reorganised it. Now there are a couple of changes to that. Colours that aren't in there any longer is this one which is a Viridian. I might put that back in, I'm not sure yet. Uh, this one here, which is an orange lake, I think, from they're yeah, both white knights colours. I decided to, get to take those out as I don't use them very much, and I believe that's gone. The black's gone. I don't really use any black in my work. I use lots of Payne's grey now instead, which is this one here. This is a umber, which I don't, which I didn't use. It's a very old paint. I think it's Royal Land Nickel. Very old, like 20, like, maybe not 20 years, maybe 15 years old. So I got it when I was, no, younger than that, maybe 10. Yes, 10 years old, I think. 
that's not in my palette anymore as I didn't use that colour either. But other than that, they're all in there, all the colours on this chart. Uh, there are a few extra added that aren't in there, which I've recently done a swatch of, which include my recent additions to my collection, which were the Rembrandt, Daniel Smith, and a couple of Schmincke paints. I believe I've got my coloured chart still. This is that one. So I've replaced some of the paints in here with this and added some as well. Yeah, I think that's it. And when the colours down here are the gouache colours, they're not they're not the watercolour colours. These are gouache paint, a rose car paint from Windsor and Newton. They are the brand that I prefer for gouache. But yes, that is my watercolour pack. What's good about it is it's well, it's fairly portable, it's still fairly compact, even though it does hold nearly 35 colours. So it's quite compact. It's really good because I can just keep this on my on the side somewhere and rip it out when I need to paint rather than having say a big load of tubes or different palettes of things I can keep it all in one palette which I really like I like as well that it's not branded so it's just black there's no sort of brand on it find it's Talika whoops I think we just hit them upside down no they're good <laughs> okay so thank you very much for watching this video I hope you found it somewhat interesting and uh, maybe helpful to yourself if you're thinking of doing the same thanks guys bye